The Chaser Report is recorded on Gadigal land. Striving for mediocrity in a world of excellence, this is The Chaser Report. Hello and welcome to The Chaser Report with Dom and Andrew Hansen back on deck once more. Andrew, I'm so sorry. Uh, I texted you about doing this over the weekend. I, I did not respect your right to disconnect now shrined in Australian law and I'm truly sorry for the intrusion. Dommy, sorry is not good enough anymore. That's not going to cut it. You're, you're going to have to pay $18,000 roughly. I, th- I gather that's the maximum penalty <laughs> wow. uh, for, for um, daring to send an email outside of work out. Yes, fortunately, I'm not your um, I'm not your your boss in any meaningful way at all. So, um, well, <laughs> depends, depends how we define this podcast relationship. I suppose. Yeah, I, I mean, suppose I'm, that's true. I do. I fancy. I, I quite like it to have eighteen grand from your dummy. I think it's Charles's fault. Can we just agree that Mister I'm doing a show over in Edinburgh is the way? I think he owes both of us. Yeah, yeah. I know what a pain. Like just because he happens to have some hit show on his hands, briefly. I mean, you and I are stuck in Australia doing the podcast with, without his efforts. Mm, he's we doing be- wankonomics, and I, I mean, from this distance, wanker is the word. I'd use, Andrew, frankly. Oh, well, uh, he's finally had the honesty to name the show after himself. I mean, oh, I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting for this. No, so, we shouldn't. We, we've got to be very careful contacting Charles because he's in a different time zone. Oh. I mean, what, so what do you do? You know, it's very hard now for a boss. Mm, I mean, it's difficult. always hard for a boss, but uh, now even harder. I feel very sorry for the bosses. Well, let's explain what how these rules work uh, after after these wonderful ads. And listen to this on, on your own time, by the way. Pick a time for these ads that um, uh, suits your working patterns, whatever they may be. Oh, yes, yes. Don't, don't. Uh, Otherwise, we'll have to pay you 18 grand. Okay, so the whole idea is that um, it was it started uh, today as we're recording, 26th of August. The idea being you don't have to take calls and emails after hours. You can be you can reasonably reasonably refuse to be contacted. Um, what does that actually mean? I mean, if your boss rings you offering you an extra shift, you just ignore them. That doesn't seem sensible. I couldn't afford yeah, to yeah, do that. Yeah, I would have thought it's a, you're at a significant disadvantage there, isn't it? What, what if they've rung you with fantastic news about, you know, like, oh, we're going to offer you a pay rise, but only if you accept it in the next five minutes. Yes. You know, and then you've missed out if you if you don't take the call I, I at love 6 a.m. the idea that I would ever have enough job security in any media role where I could afford not to take any contact from a boss at any time. <laughs> I know, it is funny in our, in our line of work. My God, if my phone rings, I'm so grateful. <laughs> I dive on it in the middle of the night whenever it is. Yeah. I mean, it's Thank always you. It's Thank usually you. a scammer. It's never, mm. it's never somebody offering work. That's um, right. But still, you know, in our business, even a scammer is, is to be thanked. I so say. true. So this is the thing. So um, it's a new right that you have. But it, you, it's only the kind of right you can exercise if you've got one of those sort of permanent jobs where it's genuinely hard to sack you. And I think Tony Burke uh, was the workplace relations minister who was spruiking this should be on that. Uh, Sally McManus from the ACTU says it's a really awesome new right that your employer can't harass you after work. You can mm. just not respond. So if you work, you should get paid. I'd rather the other way around. I'd rather they can contact me whenever they want, but the, the clock starts ticking. It's a four-hour shift whenever I get an email. Oh, <laughs> could you clock on when the email arrives? I like that idea. I mm. like that idea. What if it's an? What if it's a butt call though? I mean, the poor, the poor again, the poor boss. What if he just accidentally phones you at ten pm? He's up for eighteen grand. Charles did that yesterday, you know. He actually butt butt dialed me from uh, from Edinburgh or wherever he is Ooh, at uh, charge seven him. pm. The invoice him. I've generated the invoice already. Yeah, absolutely. He's not allowed. He's not allowed to do this. I mean, it's very French, isn't it? This whole thing. I, I my understanding is it all sort of started with the French, doesn't it? Oh, I mean, any any to do with taking it easy and and taking long lunch, you know, anything to do with making your life nice. Mm. Usually, the French are the first into it. Aren't Does they? that mean we can strike and get paid to strike? That's the la grève. That's what I've always wanted. I've wanted uh, to, get to get paid to strike. Just grave. Well, that, that's what I found. I, when I had a, I had a trip to France, and, mm. and nothing seemed to work properly. That's right. You know, things were always closed or, or not running or whatever. And and I'd always look around mystified, and then the person behind the desk would always say, uh, "C'est une grève." Yes. And nod and nod, and you'd go, "Oh, it's a grève." Of course, yep. it is. That's the reason why not, not, nothing in France moves or happens or, or works at all. Which is, fine. I'd like to see a lot more of that here. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think it's a problem if things don't work as long as no. people are able to chill out on the on the employer's dime. I mean, that's let's yeah. rebalance that. Do you remember that one wonderful day? It was uh, must have been year eleven or year twelve for me. It was towards the end of school, 
when there was a general strike in New South Wales. Um, I think there's never been one before or since, but everything was closed. Like the, the trains didn't run. I remember walking to school across the Harbour Bridge. I think I had to go to school because I went to a private school, so our, our teachers weren't on strike. But everyone else, just everything was closed. It was fantastic. Yeah, you, you should be like that every day. Yes. Every single day. Imagine how wonderful the world would be if everything was shut every day, just all day. We'd be so chilled and relaxed. It'd be, be-, it'd be beautiful yeah. life. Yeah, I'm just thinking of all the years I was a government employee doing a radio show every day. I turned up and did a new radio show every day. I could have been paid not to be there. They would have had to, have to play music or something. Yeah, well, exactly. Or at, or at the very least, just do what you like at work. See, I'd like to see, you know, more workplace freedom mm. now that we've got the right to disconnect, wouldn't you, Dommy? And one of them should be that you're not required to perform at all. Now, I mean, some, yes. there are some, some sources I've found online, and I don't know whether I can believe them, but um, there are definitely some, some articles I've spotted which say that this is the case in Italy. Oh, you really? cannot be fired for underperformance in Italy. It doesn't Fantastic. matter how bad. And I haven't fact-checked this, but I think it's a good idea anyway. It doesn't matter how badly you do the job. You just can't be fired. Brilliant. Brilliant. I, I love that. And I, I love that for me. I love that no performance challenges at all. And the other thing is if they start asking questions about performance – I want stress leave. Now, this is the thing. I've never had a job where you get stress leave in my entire life. And I'm sure many people are genuinely stressed and I don't want to minimise anyone's mental health challenges if that's real. But I would find it stressful, someone asking me questions about my performance and whether I was doing my job. I would find that so stressful. I would need to go off for months, I think, on stress leave, Andrew. Surely that's my oh, right, isn't it? At the very low, I mean, even even if you're called into a performance review, that alone, yes. you should be able to take five years off just, just from being told you have to attend. I, you know, I think... I am absolutely with you. In fact, having the job is stressful. Oh, I mean, so having stressful. any job mm. is so stressful, you should immediately on your first day be given five years of stress leave yeah. just for having a job. I think having to open your boss's email is inherently stressful. Um, oh. it, it might say anything. I, and I just saw a, a job. Uh, I just saw an email from a boss of a job that I occasionally do earlier today uh, come through. And oh, it was saying that people okay? had gone on leave and gone back. Oh, it was stressful. And I'm yeah, not rostered right. on you're today. You're coping. You better just take a break, Dommy. Just t- take some deep breaths because that's that's awful to have to receive an email, especially I know. If, it's, if it's outside work hours. Totally, totally. unacceptable. It's ex- it, it oh. is unacceptable. But also well, just well, then, why do I need to get an email? Why can't my thoughts, why can't uh, the tiniest thoughts about work also be compensated with either in, uh, payment or stress leave or both? Because if I wake up in the middle of the night, why are they going to lose my, my job, which happens mm. all the time, you know, out of under mm. underperformance, I mm. should be compensated for that insomnia. You, you, yes, absolutely. It's, it's your boss's fault if you're not sleeping, it really. Yep, I, I completely agree. I completely agree, Tommy. Mm. Um, you know, I was doing some work for a, for a local council um, last year, and, and they got rid of my job too. Did they? And I said, uh, yes, and I, uh, well, they had all these budget problems. And they said, and I said, oh, well, is, can you, you know, is there a reason? Is there a real reason? That, and, and they were struggling. They were obviously struggling to come mm. up with a reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they so they said oh uh oh, um just pr- productivity um you need to be more productive <laughs> Right, but and that was I was I in what way? Um, are there any go- you know? They, but they were totally stumped. Couldn't give couldn't give me an answer. But I think you know I think I should be entitled to an income from that job for the rest of my to life. Ba- back pay? How are you not getting paid as we speak? You well, exactly. still be on and, leave and, from and, that job. They've the stressed you life. out, and probably for my children's lives too. Yeah. I think I, you know, I feel it would be fair enough if that local council you know paid for the rest of my kids' lives. Intergenerational, and, and maybe all my descendants in mm. perpetuity. I I think um, I like that idea. I like that because because if you you're stressed, you take it out on your children, and yeah, they'll take it yeah. out on their children, and these things just spiral, mm. and it's oh, it's the employer's yeah. fault. I couldn't agree more. No, it I think, all goes back to the employer. You know, I think in a thousand years' time, your descendants should still be able to be living off some local council job, I reckon. I had a corporate <laughs> job think? for six months in 2001 when I left university for about six months. Mm. I took leave from it on multiple occasions to do the first sort of chase of projects we did on TV, and I cannot believe I'm not still drawing an income from that. That's uh, outrageous. What was I thinking? Wait, what? What? Where do they think they are in China? It's, this is a, this it's is Australia. We have rights. Outrageous. Um, this is outrageous, Don. I mean, ring them up. We should ring them up, not like during working hours, of course. Yes. And and demand demand some income. I think mm. for the last twenty five yep. years. Yeah, it's a very good idea. Um, and, and my time in just preparing the invoice as well. I oh think, well, yeah, important. you've got an invoice for the invoice. <laughs> you do, of course, you do. An invoice yeah. processing invoice. That's right. Uh, uh, lawyers do, don't they? They, they, they do sure do that. They do. Well, let, let me run you through, Dommy, some some interesting workplace laws from 
around the world. And, and, and let's just pull them apart. From okay, there. just before we do, quick smoker. Mm. I'm mm. entitled to a smoker. I don't smoke, but I, I need oh, a smoker. Oh, I beg your pardon. The Chaser Report. News you can't trust. Perhaps you'd like to have a bit of nap time. Mm, Is yeah. that something you'd love? Because I'd love a nap time. Well, if you work in Japan, for example, then there is a an expectation now that your workplace ought to give you a, not a, you know a little a little area for hirune, which is napping, uh, because you know you're expected to work such long hours jobs in Japan. Yeah, but it's now considered rather reasonable for the workplace to give you a, a little spot where you can just have a kip. Now you might recall I used to do this um, on our live tour, and in fact, in the office, so I would sometimes yes, nap I- under the desk. I was going to say, you, was... you were a very Japanese-style worker, Domi, on making a lot of Chaser shows. <laughs> yeah, was, yeah. Often having a little nap under the desk. That was, that little... was particularly when I was trying to do um, working on television and re- evening radio. I would often have a nap at about sort of three or four in the afternoon. Yeah, and a bit of hirune. Occasionally, um, the workers would gather around me and, and poke me to see how deeply I was sleeping. It was very yes, well, it was, entertaining. It was like a dog. You know, it was yeah. like the dog goes into sleep under the dining table. Yep. And you sort of, sort of went, you know, yes, re- releasing terrible farts in mid-dream. That was my right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, be, uh, well, you were. It was a very Japanese style of working. Yeah, I, think. I love that. Um, that rather than going, well, we should probably like you know have shorter hours that don't completely exhaust people. They've gone no, no a right to nap. So have a little twenty minute nap and then get back to the rest of your sixteen hour shift. <laughs> <laughs> Followed right. by drinks, Why, mandatory no, drinks yeah. with, boss, with the yeah, boss. Yeah, much better that they nap at work. Or um, or th- there's a very funny note about this um this Japanese thing too. There's there's another thing that they do which is. It's called inemuri, which is just sleeping in public. Oh, and I've it's seen considered this. Very ex- as you know, you've been to Japan and, mm. and you do see people dozing off all the time on the train and that sort of thing because they're so exhausted from from oversleeping. But um, I have read, and I don't know if you agree with this, that um. It's a, a little bit unacceptable in a Japanese workplace to, you know, fall asleep under the desk, Dom style. You are expected that if you if you drift off at your desk, you're expected to at least remain upright. Oh, well, this <laughs> is this fair? is interesting because I've seen I've seen on trains. So for instance, the last train, a lot of people will will sleep um, standing up or or sitting yeah. up or whatever it might be. You're standing up, you're actually, standing up. My friend and I used to take <laughs> photos and exchange them with the most unusual <laughs> photos. And, and this is quite possible, particularly in peak hour trains in Japan, because it's so crowded that if you if you do fall asleep standing up, there's so many bodies around you, you know, Shinjuku Station or something. Oh, you just you've lean got on a comfortable them. you know cushion in every direction. That's yeah, actually you can just lean quite on safe. Them. This is a great quite idea. Safe. Well, mm. why not have this on Aussie physical workplaces, you know? I yeah. mean, if you're a bit tired on a construction site here in Australia, Australia, I think you should be allowed to sleep, provided you remain safely standing up. Yes, that's right. Now, you, you, know, you don't obviously you can't fall asleep in the middle of a building site, but if you were standing up mm. and and a couple of your couple of your co-workers either side in high vis, maybe to yes. support you know, so you could lean on them, strap you in or to something would be good. You can actually, what they could do is they could you know use a some sort of carabiner arrangement or something to just strap you to a girder upright and have a little oh, nap, yeah, little nap exactly. there dangling above the above the air. Yeah, in a fall harness, you know, you could do drift yeah. off in a fall harness. I, I know you, I know that you, you actually have a heart attack if you dangle in a fall harness for longer than about three minutes, but you could get a short nap. You, you, you know, power nap, bit of sh- power nap. I didn't know. That. Can you really get a heart attack in three minutes in a fall harness? Yeah, yeah. I, look, I did a working at heights course, um, which I actually undertook as, as part of that council job where they got right. rid of me. Mm. And um, valuable because training it involved. Uh, you know, I was working in art galleries, and, and in art galleries, you got to get really high. Yeah, uh, you to fiddle with wor- artworks and stuff. So I did this f- working at heights course. I went to university to learn how to <laughs> really? work at, at two uh, <laughs> you, above two meters. The university I did height a, course. I did a wow. degree in it. I've so got funny. I've got my working at heights That's degree uh, from you can work Holmes on the Green Oh, it's fantastic. Oh, look, I could build it. I could fix Australia's housing crisis now. You should. Uh, thanks to my, yeah. It was a tough course. It took a whole day. It was exhausting. Wow. But um, but I did learn there that, yeah, you know, if you're strapped into one of those sort of ha- harnesses <clears throat> and you fall, the downside of the harness is that, yeah, you can only really survive dangling in it for about three minutes or so, <clears throat> maybe five, uh, before you will have a massive heart attack. So they have to get you oxygen. down within that period. They've got to get you down very, very mm. straight away, yes, because the, oh, the harness, the, the, the problem with them is they, they squash you. Yes, you I know, can see so. how they would. But that's stressful just even hearing about that. I would have thought that's you should have taken up the next week off to recover. Oh, sorry. Yes, and, 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 and a 
apologies to you if you're listening. Uh, take some stress leave listening yeah. to, these, uh, to, to that because that's very stressful. Yes, it's you can invoice stressful. it as uh, podcast at chaser.com.au for your time and we'll pass those bills on to Charles. Along with the, the cost of preparing the invoice. Yes, of course. That would be great. Absolutely. In Belgium, Don, let's move to Belgium. Uh, in Belgium, if you fancy taking a, a break from work, say, yeah. to go Which on I holiday, yeah, maybe to neighbouring uh, France, for some more downtime, yeah, you know, to enjoy the strikes or wherever you want to go. Um, according to one blog, anyway, again, I haven't fact checked this, but I think it's a brilliant idea. I, I hope it's true. Um, employers have to give you a thing called a career break, oh. which is a bit of time off to travel, and they have to pay you an allowance while you're off and guarantee that you can resume your job when you get back. I love that. Love that for me. Yeah. Why don't we do that here? I mean, if you work at Macca's, yes. say, in Australia, mm. that should be a ticket to travel the world. Yes, to for a career break. I think that's a wonderful idea. And and really, maybe I should argue to my employer from 2001, that's what I've been doing since. That oh, my and they job's should pay still you there. for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like in Belgium. That's very good. They pay you for the, for the privilege of travelling around. Wonderful. So there's another one I, that, that we should add, I think. Um, yeah, there, there's some wonderful – and, and the, here's another one that I like here. Um, is in the Philippines. If you work for 12 months of the year, they have to pay you for a 13th month. Oh, well, wow. The 13th pay. That's good. Why stop there? Why Why is it only one more month? That's my problem with it. You know? Yes, it does seem I, a bit I, limited. Yeah, why not, a, why not pay for 100 months? So you, you just get a bonus. If you manage to stay in a job for 12 months, you get a free month. Uh, that's really yeah. aiming the bar nice and low, isn't it? You've actually survived a full year. Well, and, and you know, and people's lifestyles, <clears throat> you know, we, we all know that everybody who lives in the Philippines lives a life of absolute luxury and oh, ease. Oh, famously so. Famously so, so. Yeah. You can see, where, you know, where that 13th month goes. It's probably one in a million that makes it. Mm. To that thirteenth month, very very nice. Yeah. What are we? Yeah, no, no. Well, look, I, I think, think it's brilliant. These are very very good rules, Andrew. Any any more? Anything else you can? You well, can look, I mean, I pitch well, it's just got me thinking of, of some rights that we should demand extra here in Australia. And the, the first one I'd like, I think, is for anybody who works in one of those cubicles in an open yeah. plan office. I, I feel that that's kind of it sits side by side really with the housing crisis. That because working in a cubicle is a bit like renting, isn't it? You know, yes. the, the employer kind of owns your workspace. Mm. And I think, you know, like we want better renters' rights in Australia, I feel they should apply to cubicle work. Like we should be allowed to hammer in a nail, for example, to hang up a picture. Yes. Or we should be allowed to have, have pets. I'd like to have, you know, we should Paint be able the to walls. have a pet dog in the Paint cubicle. Paint the walls. Get, get pets. Um, yeah. Yeah, put in a TV. Like hang a flat screen TV, I think it'd be good. TV, yes. Smoking. Um, loud music, I think. You should be allowed to play whatever music you want. Yes, yes. And, and entertain. You should be able to have parties. Yeah, yeah. And, well, and why, have people why over. The guest? Yeah, you should be able to have a dinner party in your in your office cubicle. Absolutely. Yeah. The openness of them I don't like either, Dommy. I mean, they call them cubicles, but there's nothing cube-like about them, really. They're completely open. At best, you've got maybe two sides of the yes. cube built. Yes. And even then, uh, they're, they're quite low. You can see over them. They don't go floor to ceiling. So I think it would be better if you had the right to build your own walls around your cubicle so yes. that you're completely enclosed. And then put in a bunk bed for your, for your little hune, your little, your little, uh, yes. little nap. Yes. I mean, why, why is the Australian government not onto this? I mean, this pathetic right to disconnect. Yes. How feeble is that? We, we, we need better right. We need much more, much more done. We do. And in fact, parliamentarians as well, don't they? Don't they get basically, uh, they get very long pensions and things, don't they? I know it's been scaled down a little bit mm. with Mark Latham, but basically once mm. we disconnect them and kick them out, don't they get a nice little financial parachute? I think they do still, don't they? Well, I, I think they do, which I find very odd. They, they they usually justify that in the rhetoric by saying, oh, because we served we served the public as if as if they generously decided to give up their entire life, mm. you know, f for the benefit of the rest of us. Oh, how nice of Oh, it's not because you wanted yes. to do the job. And it's they not because say, you decided to do that well, extremely well-paid job. <laughs> and oh, you were serving the rest of us, so we should we should thank fund you. the rest of your life. Thank you for your service. Should. And, of course, the, they say that it's very insecure because every three years they can lose their job, which just goes to – these people don't know the gig economy at they all. They don't know it. Try don't running don't, a business, mate. Try like, getting more a than a week's same. continuous work in the arts, doing anything yeah. ever. Yeah, it's it's the public service mindset that that is, I think. It's, it's all – Oh, yeah, oh. I mean, three, you know, three years, and they get paid enough for a lifetime during those three years. I so do. perhaps, um, look, I think yeah, you're right, Dommy, maybe less rights for um, 
for politicians mm. is a good thing. Less travel. More rights for cubicle workers. I love it. I love it. Hey, you know what? I think I think um, I'm in overtime now on this episode. Well, oh God. Oh, I mean, oh, yes, yes. Well, we that's that's um, a huge problem in in most countries. I think, Donny, we'd better we better stop, or otherwise. Um, the chaser's going to have to pay you and me a, an absolute fortune. <laughs> uh, we better let you go. I mean, look, if, if if you've enjoyed these thoughts, why don't you get in touch with your own ideas yes. about, you know, extra workers' rights? It, it might be the, the right to <clears throat> bring the cheapest, nastiest office snacks for somebody's birthday. It might be the right to laugh in your boss's face at anything they say oh, without it. repercussions. Whatever it is. Um, what's the email address? Don? Podcast the, the, at chaser.com. A-U. And we'll submit them to, to Fair Work Ombudsman. <laughs> very, very good. Uh, Gary is from Road. We're part of the Icon Class Network. And uh, thank you for not disconnecting thus far. I appreciate it. Yeah, sorry if we caught you outside work hours. Don't tell anybody. <laughs>